Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the standard normal distribution so we can answer questions from exercise 3D. So the standard normal distribution is how we used to calculate normal distribution probabilities before we had that fancy mode on the calculator. We always used to revert um, any sort of normal distribution such as one with a mean of 25 and a standard deviation of 3 back to a normal distribution where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. There's a very complex mathematical formula where you, that you can use to work out these probabilities and then there's just a slight adjustment in your calculations to get back to a probability concerning any normal standard distribution. There's a kind of like a coding from the, norm, from the standard normal distribution to your specific standard normal distribution for the question that you're working with. And it was only really a couple of years ago that we um, were still working uh, out probabilities for the normal distribution by this uh, kind of table of values. Here is the coding from the standard normal distribution, sorry, from the original set of data, the question that you're working with, and then we use Z as the letter for the standard normal distribution. So for any x value that's in your normal distribution, you have to take away the mean and divide by the standard deviation to get your z value that corresponds to the standard normal distribution. So it's this uh, Greek letter phi that's used when you work out or that represents the probability from a standard normal distribution table. So this just represents probability from standard normal distribution from standard normal okay so what we'll do then is we'll crack on with this question I'll show you how we can work out this probability using a standard normal distribution the random variable x is distributed with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 4 Right, in terms of phi of z, uh, for some value of z, the probability that x is less than 53. <clears throat> so what you would do, probably in an exam, is you would just grab your calculator, go to the normal CD mode, uh, type in your upper value, upper value of uh, 53, your lower value of 0, or minus 99, uh, make sure it's a very low value, and then a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 4, and the calculator would do all the work for you. Well, this is kind of what we used to have to do. We used to have to put 53 in as our x value, take away the mean, divide by 4, and we'd get a z value of 0 0.75. Then what we'd do is we'd then go to the probability tables. Let me show you where they are. We then go to this massive probability table and then go to 0.75 on the left hand side and we would look at the uh, corresponding value and we would work out that that probability is 0.7734 and that's probably what you'd get in the calculator if you were to have tried the problem uh, with your calculator. Uh, in this case here all they're looking for you to do is know that the any normal distribution can be linked to the standard normal distribution by that uh, by that coding of z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. And 53 is representing your x value, mu is 50, standard deviation is 4, so you can work out that z value that you could then go to a probability table on and work out the probability of. Sometimes what you get is you'll get a negative value for z, in which case you have to kind of look at this table again for the positive value of that value and then take it away from 1 uh, because it's on the other side of the normal distribution. If we compare the diagram for the original distribution and the new one, the probability of getting below 53 on the first is the same as the probability of getting below 0.75 on the second. So this is our original normal distribution, mean of 50, standard deviation of 4, and the probability of less than 53 is that area here, and the probability of getting less than 0.75 where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 is the same as 
this probability up here. Same area, still the same as 0 0.7734, I think it was. <clears throat> okay, so that is the standard normal distribution, and it's where your it's a basic normal standard distribution, normal um normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and the, there is a link between any other normal distribution where z is equal to x minus mu divided by sigma. That is the relationship between any standard uh, any normal distribution and uh, the standard normal distribution. When I say standard, uh, you immediately link to z values where you've got a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Let's have a go at another one. Uh, the random variable for x, uh, 50 mean, standard deviation of four, write in terms of phi z, um, for some values of z, the probability x being bigger than 0. So x being bigger than 55. So once again, x, the x value we're working with here is 55. So you put the uh, 55 in where the x is. Uh, the mean is 50, standard deviation is 4. So you work out that your z value is 1.25. Now in the olden days, we would go to the formula booklet and we'd look up what 1.25 is and then do 1 minus it. In this case here, we're going to have to do 1 minus phi of 1.25, uh, and that's the answer to this question. Then. The reason it's the answer is because if we want the probability, if this is our um, normal distribution for this distribution here, and you want uh, the probability, oh, well, that's 50, and you probably want the probability of 55 or more, then what phi of z works out is this um is this area here, but you don't want that area, you want the probability that it's more than 55, which is this area here, so it's 1 minus phi of 1.25. Now you might be asked to find some of, some. you might be asked to find a value for z which corresponds to a particular probability, you are given some standard values in the formula booklet, and this has come straight from the formula booklet. I've screenshotted it straight from the formula booklet. On the left-hand side, on these, this column here and this column here, you're given exact probabilities um, upwards on the normal distribution, um, on the standard normal distribution. So if the mean here is zero, standard deviation is one, then what you're given here is the z values that correspond to an exact probability. Let me show you, for example, let's go for 15% on this side here. The corresponding z value for that is 1.0364. So that would be the z value. And then you could always work out your x value by just using the coding of x minus mu divided by sigma um, in that way. Now it's always on the right hand side here. Now generally that's kind of the opposite to how we'd usually work. Normal distribution generally works things out from the le uh, from the left hand side of the points you're given. In this case here on this percentage points table, it works out f uh, the above probability um, for the um, for the z value that you want to work out. Oh, brilliant! We've got another example here for the thirty percent. This area here is 30%. What's this z value here going to be? It's going to be 0.522, sorry, 0.5244. Okay, so let's have a look at how we might use that percentage points table in a question then. This is probably more likely a type of question you're going to be asked in the exam. Um, a systolic blood pressure, pressure when the heart beats, um, of an adult population measured in S mmHg is modelled as a normal distribution with a mean of 127, standard deviation of 16. A medical researcher wants to find adults with blood pressure higher than the 95th percentile. Find the minimum blood pressure needed for an adult to be included in her survey. Start by drawing a diagram and a sketch of your question. What you want to find out here is this value here that will give you 0 0.05 on this right hand side area here. <clears throat> now we've got that inverse normal distribution function on the calculator, but let me show you how to do it without that mode. So, we'll need to start by finding the equivalent value on the standardised distribution. So, when we have a mean of 0 and a sigma of 1, 
what is this value here going to be if this area at the top here is 0.05? Well, what we can do then is we can go to our percentage points table and work out what this question mark value is going to be. Go to the value of 0.05 and you get 1.6449. So that value there is 1.6449. And now the way that we're going to link this 1.6449 value back to our actual answer is by that coding process of z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. So the z value this time is 1.6449. We don't know what the x value is, but it's going to be taking away the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. So inverting that times by 16 and add 127, and you get 153. So 153 is the answer here. Linking back to the context of the question, um, the researcher is looking for people with blood pressure of 153 mmHg and above. Alternatively, you could have done this on the calculator using the inverse normal mode on your calculator. You'd be looking here for an area of 0 0.95 because the inverse normal mode on your calculator works out the probability to the left of a certain point. Um, you're looking to find that point where the mean, where the standard deviation is 16 and the mean is 127, and you get exactly the same answer here, 153.3176587. So you've got your standardized normal mode of doing it, and you've got the calculator way of doing it as well. Okay, so it's your turn to have a go at answering a question here. Pause the video. Try and do it without using that inverse normal mode on your calculator. And you never know, you might be forced to do it that way in an exam, so it'd be good to know the two different methods of doing it. So pause the video and try this question out. Okay then, so for the first question then, use the percentage points table to find a value for z such that the probability of z being greater than little z is equal to 0.025. Let me just remind you here, when you've got a capital Z in probability, that's your distribution. So this is signaling to us that this is the standard normal distribution because it is a capital letter. And then the little z is the... Um, is the point along the um, x-axis so this is this is the variable that we're going to actually change so we're looking at the percentage points table and we're looking for the value that gives us 0 0.025 and upwards and that's exactly what we've got set out here for us so it's 0 0.025 so the z value there is going to be 1.9600 Lovely, that was easy. A fighter jet training uh, program takes only the top 2.5% of candidates on a test. Given that the scores can be modelled with a normal distribution with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 4, use your answer in part A to find the necessary score to get on the program. Okay, so what we've got here is we have two distributions. Let's draw the first distribution with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 4. And what we've also got here is the standard normal distribution where we have a mean of zero and a uh, standard deviation of one. Now, what we know for 2.5% is that the Z marker is going to be 1.96, and that will give us this area of 2.5%. So what we now need is the way that we can convert this value back into this normal distribution where this area is also 2.5%. And the way we convert from your standard normal distribution, Z, back to your normal distribution, X, is by that coding of Z equals X minus mu over sigma. Now you know the Z value on your Z distribution, that's 1.96, this is going to be equal to the x value that's along this line here, where, where this marker point here, the actual answer that we're looking to find. And then we have to take away the mean and divide by the standard deviation. And now we're going to do this in reverse. So what I'm going to do on my calculator now is 1.96 times 4 
add 80 and then I'm going to get an answer here of 87.84. So therefore this marker here is 87.84. So what this means for the answer here is that um, the, the mark that you have to get or the score that you have to get is 87.84 or above. Okay, so there we are. That's how we answer this question here without the calculator. Lovely. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Have a go at plenty of the exercises from 3D, particularly those problem-solving ones, the exam-style questions, and ask your teacher for help if you need any. Great. Thanks very much for watching.